Hello everyone, welcome to another round of Road CC Recommends. In this video, we'll be rounding up the best things that we've reviewed over the past month, and as usual, it is a bumper crop. We've also got a truly game-changing product, game-changing uh, product <laughs> of the month, so hang on for that. Gotta love a game changer. Now, yeah. if you're still stuck for Christmas ideas, take a look at our Christmas gifts video. For starters, that's popping up now. But there's plenty of great bikes and kit in this month's show. Let's crack straight on with the bikes that made it into Road CC Recommends this month. Ready? Ready as I'll ever be. So, <laughs> first up, we've got a classic titanium performance bike from Enigma who are one of the best regarded titanium bike builders in the UK. The Evoke is a great bike, it can be ridden hard and fast, but it has the suppleness and bump taming qualities that you get from a great TI frame. It's just a brilliant all-round road bike. The main changes for this new version of the Evoke frame are new internal cable and hose routing and the adoption of the threaded T47 bottom bracket standard. That gives a nice wide shell for good stiffness and the threaded cups mean it's simple to replace. The chain stays have been stiffened just a bit and in terms of geometry, it's not a full on race bike, but not far off. So you're getting a frame that's very responsive. You get plenty of feedback, but with that nice titanium zing. This is a great bike, although it's six grand for this build, it might be one for the wish list rather than that letter to Santa. Yeah, unless you've been really good. I haven't been really good. Okay, from one extreme to another, here's a bike that costs not much more than a tenth of what the Enigma build would set you back in cheapest chips. Uh, the Vetus Razor Disc Claris, still a great bike though, mm -hmm. and crucially, the ride quality of the frame set means it's well worth upgrading the parts as you go. Now, when Stu reviewed this, he was really impressed with the bike as a whole, and he reckons that the frame set rides as well as frame sets on bikes costing two or three times as much as this. You get neat internal routing, even through the fork, and there are mudguard mounts if you're thinking of buying the bike to use as a winter trainer. Now, Shimano's Claris group set is the sixth tier in its road bike range. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's limited with only eight sprockets at the back, so you don't get as much range. But in terms of ergonomics, it's really not that different from nine speed Sora, 10 speed Tiagra that sits above it. Most of the finishing kit is pretty basic, but this is a bike that majors on value for money. And you know, it's a great buy as an entry level road bike. Yeah, I mean, that looks like a great starter bike for the road, really. So let's head on to the gravel now, though, with Tifosi's Cavazzo Ekar, which is the third generation of carbon frame set that started out more as an endurance or all-road bike. But these days, it's definitely designed for the trails with a slacker head tube and 45mm clearance. It's a really fun bike, both on and off the tarmac, with a ride that's right in that sweet spot. It's nice and responsive, but still stable and well balanced. The frame set is well finished. It's got plenty of mounts for luggage, although the fork is missing the triple bosses that are common these days for those big cargo cages. The build we tested was Campag's 13 speed Ekar group set, which gives a great spread of gears, even on a single ring at the front. John, who reviewed the bike, reckoned that he'd go with a lower gear overall uh, to make steep off-road climbs more manageable. But of all the one by systems, Ekar manages to get the biggest range without those huge gaps, thanks to that extra sprocket. Yeah, and more gearing news at the end of this one. Now, if you want to make the hills really Gearing easy, <laughs> you need something like our next recommended bike, the Rally Trace, which is a lightweight, sporty e-bike that uses Marla's e-bike motion X35 motor system with a rear hub motor and the battery hidden inside the down tube. Now, first glance, you probably wouldn't even pick it as an e-bike, but you're getting really useful assistance up the hills and a bike that's light enough to ride without power most of the time. So the best of both worlds, would you say? Yeah, maybe. I mean, Rally mostly market this as an urban and leisure bike, but it's got 40 mil gravel tires and it's got a wide range nine speed gearing. <laughs> so it's easily capable of a bit of light trail use or even a bit of touring if you remember to pack your charger in, in your pannier. Yeah. Um, the motor system, is not the most powerful you'll find out there, but it's really light and it still gives you a, use, a useful shove when you need it. So uh, if you're after an e-bike that feels a lot like a normal bike, with the option to give yourself a break on the climbs, it's exactly the kind of thing you need. Okay, well that's a really nice selection of bikes, varied selection that have made the cut this month. Yeah. With winter pretty much here, we've been testing a lot of clothing, some of which you'll be glad to hear have been really good. So first up are the ASOS Equip RS Springfall Bib Shorts S9. <laughs> That's a catchy name. Yeah, a uh, little bit of a tongue twister, not the most 
exciting name. Anyway, you might not be thinking it's looking much like shorts weather out there right now, but these shorts are super comfy when it's cold uh, with a thick fabric that has a fleecy finish against the skin. Combine that with a really excellent pad and straps and you've got a pair of shorts that are perfect for cooler days. You can always add some knee warmers if the mercury drops. At 200 quid, they're not exactly cheap, but they're a great investment if you're planning to put in some long miles outdoors over winter. And you can pair them with the equally catchily named. And equally expensive. Yes, even <laughs> slightly more expensive. ASOS Miele GTS Spring Fall Jacket C2. Another catchy name, and again, it's perfect for cooler weather. So often at this time of year, it's the wind chill that really knocks the heat out of you. So you'll be glad to know the windproofing of this jacket is really top notch. And with the nights drawing in and the days being pretty dark too, a big splash of fluoro yellow doesn't go amiss either. It's kind of part jacket, part jersey, this top. So it's ideal for days where you're not sure which way to go. If you're working hard on the bike, then there's still plenty of breathability through the back and side panels without compromising the protection at the front. Yeah, sounds like a good jacket. And another option for those colder days that aren't full winter is the Castelli Perfetto ROS2 jacket. At £245, it's a big investment, but Liam, who tested it, reckons you'll definitely get your money's worth if you like to ride all year round. It's made from uh, gauze infinium fabric, which is impressively windproof, and Castelli has taped the front-facing seams on the shoulders to make sure no gusts get through to cool you down, which is good. On the other hand, if the sun comes out and you find yourself a bit overdressed, uh, there are neat side vents to add a bit of airflow if you need it. This isn't a full waterproof, but it will shrug off road spray and showers, and it layers up well with a full waterproof jacket if things get really bleak out there, which they very often do at this time yep. of year. Absolutely. So we've got another Gore Infineon top in this month's roundup too. This one is from Gore itself and it's called the Spirit Jacket. It's more of a soft shell jacket than a jersey, so it's got more relaxed fit and more jackety type pockets. Mm -hmm. With one on the front for your phone and one big side entry zipped pocket at the back. The cut means it's more for commuting, more upright riding. But that also means it's really versatile, so you can use it for gravel or mountain bike rides, and it's normal enough looking for a walk into town or, you know, ride to the pub, mm -hmm. if you will. You can have it in a bunch of neutral colour schemes, or there's a black and fluoro one if you're buying it more for the commute. Yep, and there's another Gore Infinium jacket in our round up today. Infinity Infinium, really? <laughs> well... I think we know what our fabric of the month is then. Yep, again, this is from Gore, and this is the Lupra jacket. And it's more of like an all-purpose outer layer. You get a hood on this one, mm -hmm. um, and the hood is big enough to wear over a helmet, so that's good for the bike, but it's also got bungees, so you can cinch it down to fit any head size, mm -hmm. and also it will stop it you know, flapping around behind you if you're not using it, mm -hmm. which is annoying. Anyway, it's a great multi-purpose jacket, and the inclusion of the hood means it's even more versatile. Now there isn't much in the way of reflectives on the loop press, so maybe not the best commuting jacket for after dark, but it's a really good kind of all round performer. Now if it gets really cold, like it is as we're filming this, yeah, it's horrible, then you're gonna want something a bit more heavy duty and the Stolen Go Alpine Epic jacket is just the ticket for this. It's a soft shell jacket for riding hard in bad weather and it's rated all the way down to sub-zero temperatures. Stolen Goat is used a fabric at the front that has a waffle texture on the inside to trap air between you and the elements. And the back has a brushed finish inside for comfort and warmth. This isn't a fully waterproof out layer, but it'll see off showers and even in prolonged rain, the fabrics will still keep you warm. There are neoprene cuffs to keep the weather out and a two-way zip you can open for ventilation from the bottom if you're overheating on a climb. So that's the cold covered, mm -hmm. and if it's really wet, then we've got another jacket that'll be just the ticket. Well, we're pretty jacket heavy, aren't we? But this is the season. It is indeed the season. You really need a reliable jacket. You can pull out the kit box when it's truly lashing it down. Yeah, and what we've got here is the Endura Pro SL waterproof shell jacket, and that certainly fits the bill for this. So it's got a 20,000 millimeter waterproofing rating, which should be good for anything up to about a tropical storm. And on top of that, a 60,000 gram per square meter breathability rating, which is really high. Now, Ben, who tested this jacket, found it comfortable, even on long, hard rides in the rain. 
Incidentally, if you're not clued up on what these numbers mean, then we've got a handy vid popping up now you can watch, which will tell you all about it. Yeah, if that's the kind of thing you like to watch. Uh, <laughs> it is useful though. Back to this jacket, and Pro SL is designed for fast riding, so it's got a long dropped rear to keep you covered in a low position. It's got long sleeves for your stretched out arms. It's also nice and visible both day and night. It's got bright fabrics and a generous helping of reflectives. Although, if you want, like most jackets, you can have it in black. Have we finally run out of jackets to talk about? <laughs> yeah, I think we have, yeah. Let's move on to some shoes, because um, we've got a few of those too. Let's kick off with these, the Shimano RC7s. What you're getting here is loads of the tech from Shimano's top-end S-Fire race shoes, but at a much more affordable price. These are stiff, light and comfortable shoes for road riding and racing. Yeah, I've got a pair of these. I've had them, I don't know, I think they're about two versions mm -hmm. ago and they're still going strong. They only had one boa dial back then, so it looks like they've gone up in the world a bit. Yeah, you get a double boa closure this time and a carbon sole with a stiffness rating of 10. 10 out of 10? No, out of, out of 12, obviously. <laughs> Better than 10 out of 13, yeah. but yeah. Uh, there's an air channel in the sole though, too, uh, to keep you ventilated in hot weather. The uppers are synthetic leather, and they're both really comfortable and really secure. They're just a really solid pair of shoes for riding fast in. So unless you're really racing at an elite level uh, where you get given shoes, you probably don't need to spend more than what these are priced at. You probably at. don't need to spend more, but maybe, maybe you want to spend more. Maybe you do, yeah. Yeah, and, and of course, who are we to stop you? And if you're a woman looking for a really smart pair of race kicks, then look no further than the Live Matcha Pro shoes. These have been ridden to podiums, uh, they've been ridden on the track by pros. So if, you, if you've got them, you're kind of out of excuses shoe-wise. Also, look how shiny they are. Very, very shiny. Very shiny. Yes, it's mm. not just about the looks though. They're stiff, they're light, they're comfortable, they're easy to clean, so they stay looking fancy. Um, the new Exabeam sole is the base of the shoe, obviously, and Emma, our tester, was confident it's the stiffest sole she's ever ridden, so probably a 12 or even a 13, who knows? 13. That's paired with synthetic upper and Boa Li2 dials. They've got adjustable arch support, and they've got a shark skin fabric inside the shoe that um, grips your sock and prevents your, mm -hmm. your foot from moving around, which is really good for power transfer. So if you're looking for a high-performance shoe, these should definitely be on your list. Yep. If you're not looking for a high performance shoe and you just want to kick around in town in some shoes that are easy to walk in and grippy on your flat pedals, then you'll want to have a look at the Endura Humvee flat pedal shoes. They use sticky foot grip rubber, that is its real name, on the sole <laughs> and you get great grip on the pedals as the name suggests. They're great for just walking around town too and the understated unisex design doesn't really scream bike shoes when you're not on two wheels. They size up a bit big, so we recommend trying before you buy if you can, or go for the smaller shoe if you're in between sizes. Yeah. Okay, let's move on from shoes to a couple of bike bits that have done well this month. First up, we've got another catchily named product in the Specialized S-Works, Turbo Tubio Tubeless. I can't even understand. get to the end of it. <laughs> Specialized S-Works Turbo Tubio Tubeless Ready T2 T5 Tire. <laughs> Yeah, crikey, that really is yeah. quite a mouthful. Okay, so that T2, T5 bit at the end is telling you about the rubber used in the tread. So there's a harder T2 section along the middle, which gives you good low rolling resistance, good durability. Either side of that, you get grippier T5 rubber for better cornering. And George, who tested these, uh, found them to be really good for grip, especially in the wet. They were super easy to set up tubeless too, so that's a bonus. Cool. So talking of tubeless, Another product that's made it into recommends this month is the Cranks tubeless rim tape. Now everyone knows that getting a good seal between the tape and the rim is half the battle when it comes to tubeless, and the Cranks tape is just the right combination of sticky and pliable and tough to make wrapping your rim a stress-free job. You can get it in whips from 19mm all the way up to 35mm, and a 10 metre roll is enough to wrap three wheels. So this one's pretty easy to recommend, and it's pretty cheap too. Right, onto a light next, because it's a light season too. We have loads of lights in for the winter, and this video popping up now shows you the process we go through to get the shots for our beam comparison engine. There's a link to that in the description below. It's a great way to compare, I think, nearly 50 of this year's lights. Yep, 
and one of those you'll find in there is the Raveman LR1600. So you tested this one yourself, Dave. I did, um, and it's great, which is why we're talking about it now. Uh, I've had a number of Raveman lights over the years, and I generally found them to be very good. The LR series lights, of which this is one, they have a wide, flat beam that's really good for road riding. It doesn't blind oncoming drivers as much in the lower settings, at least. And you can ride all night on one charge, and you can power the light from an external battery mm -hmm. if you do run out of juice. So you don't have to sit around waiting for it to recharge, which is great. Yeah. 1600 lumens, that is quite a lot of light. That is a lot of light. So mm -hmm. on the highest setting, it's enough light for any speed I can do on or off-road at night without frightening myself to death. So, yeah. And there's a wireless remote toggle as well that you can sit on the, the bars, which gives you a, a little button to click between okay. fill and dip beam, which is super useful. Just a couple more products before our product of the month. So first up is the Cask Synthesi helmet. Very nice isn't, pronunciation, yeah, mate. Isn't super expensive, but at 90 quid, it puts in a stellar performance. It's easily one of the best helmets we've tested this year in terms of just bang for your buck. The Synthesi meets all the usual standards, but it's also passed Cask's own WG11 rotational impact test. It's, this is Cask's alternative to MIPS. Uh, we did a deep dive on the differences between these recently, and there is a link to that in the description. Yeah. Helmets need to be comfy too, and the Synthesi is excellent. It's got a good fit, comfortable pads, and efficient airflow through the 13 vents. At under 250 grams, it's light for the money too. It's a solid buy if you're looking for a new road helmet for pretty much any kind of riding. Sounds like it ticks all the boxes, doesn't mm -hmm. it? If you want to keep your fitness over winter, then indoor training is your friend. And with apps like Zwift and Ruby and Wahoo X and the like, it's much less of a chore than it used to be. Sometimes it's even fun. Uh, I don't know about fun. Rarely <laughs> fun, actually. Yeah, not always yeah. fun or even very often fun. But anyway, if you want one of the best trainers out there to make it as fun as it can be, then the Wahoo Kicker Smart Trainer V6 is right up there. You'll not be surprised to learn that the V6 in its name means it's the sixth incarnation of the Kicker. All right, so what's changed on the sixth incarnation of the Kicker? Well, mechanically nothing. The resistance unit is the same, so is the frame. But now you get Wi-Fi built in, so you get a stronger and faster connection, so you can say goodbye to all those Ant Plus dropouts mm. that have ended many a Zwift race in tears. Now, if you don't trust even that, then you can hardwire the Kicker to your computer with an Ethernet cable, but you'll need to buy a dongle for that. Wahoo have done some work on the erg mode, so that's where the trainer tries to hold a constant power. There's an easy ramp function now, which eases you back into an interval over 10 seconds if you have to grind to a halt because you're knackered or you have to stop for any other reason. Hmm. Um, the maximum resistance of 2,200 watts and the maximum simulated gradient of 20% are the same as the last kicker, and accuracy is claimed plus or minus 1%, which is as good as any that you'll find. Now, Aaron, who tested the kicker, reckons it's the most realistic trainer out there for him in terms of ride feel, and he's a Premier Division Zwift racer, so if it's good enough for him, then us normal mortals should not really have any complaints, should we? No, definitely not. Although, it is worth looking around for deals on the V5 kicker if you don't need the extra stuff on the 6th version, because that is still a great trainer. Yeah, it definitely is. Okay, we've made it to the end, so thanks for watching this far. Our product of the month, we promise, will be a real game changer, that word, game changer, and it is the classified power shift rear hub. Is this the death of the front derailleur? Well, a few things have been the death of the front derailleur over the years, including recently one by, but there's still plenty of them about. True, but with the one by setup, you're accepting a bit of a compromise in terms of gears. That isn't the case with power shift. So for the uninitiated, what the power shift essentially is, is a two-speed hub gear fully enclosed in the rear hub and controlled wirelessly from a button on your bars or your DI2 shifter if you're running Shimano DI2. There's a direct drive and a reduction gear of about 70%. So it's basically like having a small ring hidden inside your hub. Okay, so talk me quickly through the benefits of a system like this over having just a front mech and a double chain ring then. Okay, well, Allow me to go through some of them. So for a start, shifting is basically instant, so it's not affected by load. So if you need to bail the small ring on a steep, loose gravel climb when you're working hard, it's just a click and you're there. On a front mech system, even an electric one, 
you need to finesse those shifts a bit and there's a chance of dropping your chain always here it's just click and go yeah. also all the mechanical bits are hidden inside the hub so there's no getting mucky they never have to be indexed for road racing and time trialing if you're hiding components it has the potential to be more aero We've already seen manufacturers like 3T experimenting with one by for aero road bikes. Up until now, it's always been a compromise, but now you really can have the best of both worlds. Sounds good. So, are there any downsides to this system? Well, it's another thing to remember to charge, although like DI2, a single charge should last you ages. If you're swapping out super light components, it'll probably be a touch heavier, and of course, it is expensive. We tested the gravel wheels that Classified makes and they're £2,300. They were decent but pretty unexceptional wheels, but Classified is working with a whole range of new wheel makers now. DT Swiss, Mavic, MV, Reynolds and loads more. So soon your favourite wheels might be available in a power shift option. Liam, who tested this system, reckons it's going to shake up the road bike world. I guess we'll see. We'll see if it gets shaken up. Right, so there you go. That is this month's best products as reviewed on Road CC. Now, there are thousands and thousands of bike and kit reviews on the site, so head over there to check them out. And again, if you're stuck for Christmas ideas, then remember to check out our vid with some of our top picks. And don't forget to subscribe to see more from us. Cheers and Merry Christmas if we don't see you before then. <laughs>